Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharatni and welcome to TFIR's new show Security, sponsored by Polyverse. And today we have with us once again, Archie's Gore, CTO of Polyverse. Archie's, uh, as we all know, there is a new, uh, uh, it's a very serious uh, heap-based buffer overflow uh, vulnerability that has been discovered in sudo that can be exploited by any local user. Uh, the bug can be used to elevate privileges to root, even if uh, the user is not listed in the sudoers file. No user authentication is required to exploit the bug. It even has a name called Baron Same Did. Let's talk about this vulnerability, what exactly it is. It allows you to overflow. Uh, what's an overflow? So, uh, you know, quick recap, right? Um, when when a program runs, it has, um, you know, a, a program sort of comes as a file, and we know we know all that, right? And when the program developer ships you the program, it it comes as this this file that needs to be loaded into memory, and but that's fixed, right? So like the program can't do a lot um, with that fixed amount of memory. So as it runs, it now needs to allocate more memory. And it goes to the OS and it says, hey, give me, I want 50 bytes for this. I want 25 bytes for that. I want 100 bytes for that. Um, and where it gets that memory is called the heap. And the heap is just like this big area of, of empty memory. And you, you go to the OS and you ask it for some of that for use. Um, and when you're done, you can hand it back. Or if you crash, then the OS collects it back. What's an overflow? An overflow is like, um, you know, if you think of like, you know, boiling milk, right? And you have like water next to your boiling pot of milk and the milk overflows. And then now your water has a little bit of milk that's spilled over, right? Uh, any, any such analogy, but the exact same thing happens in memory, right? You have some memory that is, um, that is, um, you know, allocated for some reason and you're protecting the hell out of that memory, right? You're basically saying this memory holds my passwords and no one will ever touch this memory. And I encrypt it and I use homomorphic encryption and policies and, and you know, like processor level memory protection bits and, and you do all this super cool stuff to make sure that that memory is guaranteed not exploitable. But what you do is right next to that part of milk, so to speak, right, is a part of water. And if all an attacker has to do is like, you know, turn the gas on and when they overflow, when they go past that memory, they're now writing into all the memory that you're not watching for, right? You're, you know, like you're not using all of those super cool measures to protect that memory. And so the way you overflow is it's a logic bug in a way, um, you know, when when a program loads input, right? So input from file, input from network, input from the console, from the keyboard, and it's asked the OS for 50 bytes and the keyboard puts in 100 bytes or the file contains 100 bytes, right? Um, and when it does that, it overflows out of that memory. And then it can, you know, once you do that, it can write anywhere. Now, the here's this, here's, like, I'm sorry if this is like super um, nutty details, but I, I get very excited about this. Um, but one of the things to remember is uh, memory, you know, like anything else in life, right? It has addresses and they go from like, you know, the zeroth address up to the highest address. Remember that program that you ship, the program loads at the end, right? So the program loads, uh, the stack as it's called, is at the very, very end and the stack grows backward right? Your heap is at the very beginning and it grows forward. So now let's say you overflow something in the heap, right? And what you can do is if you overflow a billion bytes, you eventually hit the stack, which means that you can now start manipulating uh, what your original program was doing uh, from out of this temporary memory that the operating system gave you. Um, and, and there's there's many protections around that, like you know the OS won't just let you write to intermediate pages and whatnot. But um, but that's basically what what the bug is. So so what does it all come down to? What it really means is um, here's a program that has said my program is untouchable, and here's a super cool memory that I have gone through great lens, right? Intel and the processors and chip makers and trusted boot and secure boot and then the DRAM chip makers, the memory uh, creators, 
and then the operating system with its own RBAC policies, and then you know the program with its crazy complicated policies, right, um, is is protecting that. And what what the attacker is doing is they're using a standard set of inputs like a file or operating you know keyboard, and they're able to go past that, and now they're able to modify your original program. And so at that point, um, it's not a bug, right? So you can make that program do anything. And if, if we, you know, where we started from, because that program runs as super user, if I was any average user, right, just anyone on the planet, I have no permissions to run super user code. By going out of that special memory, I can now tell that program, which is sudo, to do anything the hell I want, right? And so that's, that's where the, the fundamental bug is. Now, I have a couple of things here that I want to understand because every time what happens is that what we have to keep in mind here is that you need local access. This is a, not a remote, you know, exploitation bug. So number one, how does that affect the vulnerability? Because you actually need physical access to, to machines. Uh, what does that mean for either local machines or you're running a server or you're in a container? Number one is, number two is that, have you seen any exploited, exploitation in the wild already or still a very early phase? So I'll answer the second one because it's quicker. Um, I don't yet know of any exploitation. I learned of this yesterday. Um, I'm actually furiously analyzing, um, you know, when we're producing repros, that's what we do. Um, now to the first question, is it, you know, what is the severity? Why is this important? Um, there are there are many, many, many situations, uh, pretty much a lot of situations where uh, users actually have non-root access. Um, you know, in the container world, it gets somewhat easier, um, but actually think of a container world, right? A container runs on, you know, let's say you're running a Kubernetes workload and you're not an admin, um, but your container is running as a regular user. You could absolutely use that and parlay that using the sudo bug to become an admin on your Kubernetes nodes. So if you're, you know, I mean, that's a Kubernetes use case, but there are so many situations where we are running these workloads, which we think are running, you know, as regular users and they don't have permission to break out and become super users. And as of right now, every sudo on the planet, um, you know, if you have that sudoers file, which pretty much, I mean, I've never come across someone not having that file, but it's possible, right? Um, is now able to break out and become a super user. And so it is It is a very, very pervasive situation. Um, another way to think about why that's important is think of the contrapositive, right? If it's not a pervasive situation, why do we need sudo anyway, right? Why, why shouldn't everyone just be super user? Um, and so if, if, you know, it's sort of like proof by contradiction, right? How many, how many enterprises are willing to say, hey, you know what, everyone can be super user because might as well, right? The sudo thing anyway gives them that right, so I don't care. And the fact that we don't say that is, is proof that it, it matters a lot, it's, it's huge. Of course, this is a very obvious question here is that with Polyverse, what we do talk about is a stop attack before it happens. Uh, and that also means cases like these, you know, where you had no idea, you know, zero data attacks are there and then these kind of bugs are there. Because companies will take their own time to, to release patches. And on top of that, then the users will take even longer to actually apply those patches. And then you have cases like Equifax, you know, where the patch was there, but uh, no offenses to Equifax, they try to do their best, but there are a lot of things that you cannot. So let's talk about what does it mean for Polyverse? What does it mean to have a model like polymorphing? How does that protect users? Out of the box, all of our customers are just fine, right? Whether they're patched or not, uh, you know, and they've been fine, right? So even if like Qualys hadn't discovered this bug, let's assume that uh, a nation state had discovered this bug before them, right? Or someone else knew the bug and they were exploiting it. They're all fine. There's no problem. 
And that's a very powerful thing to say, right? So are you like making a bold statement that all Polyverse users who are using polymorphing are totally safe from this uh, pseudo bug? Um, as of right now, yes. Now, of course, when people watch this interview, they will start to craft attacks against specific polymorph uh, polymorphs. Um, but uh, they're going to pay an ON price. What it means is um, the, the current attack that is created against say, Ubuntu, Red Hat, SUSE, pick one, right? There's an attack that is created against that distribution's sudo. Um, that attack is not going to work on polymorphing, just, just by definition. Um, I'd be very surprised if it did. Now, there, look, just like with any security, there is a, I think it's one in 10 to the power 17 probability that a random attack will work, right? And I'm, I'm okay with those odds. But more practically, what's going to happen is they, you know, A, they have to know the full layout of each polymorph. So each customer has to somehow leak their binaries and the attacker has to then reproduce. Many customers have multiple binaries. Um, they now have to spend the, all that effort to produce then the third attack and the fourth attack. So the cost of attacking, which was O1, uh, you know, you attack once and run everywhere. Just became O N for every polymorph that exists. Archie, thank you so much for for talking about uh, uh, not only the the importance of the role of pseudo, which kind of offers a kind of buffer between you know full, and then also explaining what is buffer overflow, and then also explaining you know how this uh, uh, bug is uh, affecting the system, and then the most important thing is that uh, once again the whole point is that you don't have uh, to take all the risks. It's like having a polymorph system is more or less like having an airbag in your car. You must have it because when you need it, you wish you had one. So um, <laughs> I wish more and more companies do embrace because uh, as we are moving towards this cloud native world, security should not just be an afterthought. Security should also not be a cat and mouse game. It should not be okay, what to do now? It should be, you know, your system should be protected before the attack happens. And that is also the tagline of poly Polyverse as well. So Archie, thank you so much for explaining those things. And I look forward to talk to you again about some uh, future threats. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is so much, this is, I'm passionate about um, when, when we find bugs like these, I get very excited. So thank you for having me.